another episode of Hero Paranormal in three, two, one. Time machine, third eye feeling like it need visine. Blast off, blast off, blast off, blast off. Come blast off in my time machine, third eye feeling like it need visine. Blast off, blast off, blast off. Blast off on another episode of Hero Paranormal Podcast. I am Ryan, the original outlaw of the airwaves, bringing you this podcast. Just south of Area 51, La Madre Mountain at the base of it, coming to you live and direct. And joining us from South Carolina, Kendall Welpton, the director of photography, among many other things, on a project called The House in Between. The project is available on Amazon. I have to say it hits on so many areas that have similarities to locations I'm fascinated with, like Shapeshifter Territory in northeastern Utah, or Sedona, Arizona, Kanab, Utah, Four Corners, Shiprock, etc. The film delves 10 times deeper than anything I've seen on the subject matter, and does so in a very professional, not hyped, not dramatized way. Uh, Kendall is owner and founder at Robot Ninja Media, director of photography at Pilgrim Media Group, and has rocked the paranormal world, in my opinion, with the veracity, honesty, transparency, and video evidence caught in a long-term project now available on Amazon and worth watching. I know I'm going to watch it many, many times. Kendall, the paranormal pursuer, achiever, man, you made me a believer. Welcome to the Hero Paranormal Podcast. Hey, Ryan, how's it going? It's going great. Man, you, we were, you were director of photography on the project. And also the illustrations were great. I have to say, epic job there. there there's so much that is going on in this. I, I want to I be fair and say, how did you get involved in this? And, and what were your thoughts? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, a few years back, uh, I, I started Robot Ninja Media, which uh, is a production company, my wife, Farah, um, and I, I started. We wanted to start doing uh, documentaries and, and, and branded content. You know, for many, many years, I've been doing some documentary TV for other companies and kind of wanted to branch out and start uh, spreading my wings a little bit. And uh, just at that same time, we had started a few months later, uh, my good friend and coworker from Ghost Hunter, Steve Gonzalez, gave me a call. And uh, he, he, had, he had said, you know, we were catching up. And he had said, hey, I, you know, I got this house that's really, uh, really just interesting. There's a lot going on um, at this house. And, and right there, I was like, wait a minute, you, you've had an experience there? And he's like... Yeah, I actually did a few times, and and for Steve to have an experience, that's that's quite quite a lot because I followed Steve for many many years, and you know I can count on my hand the number of experiences he's had, and uh, you know uh, his credibility in the uh, in the paranormal field just speaks you know numbers here, and and so I I, I said let's do it, you know we agreed on doing a meeting with uh, with Alice and. John and Brad, Alice is the owner, the homeowner of the, the house that all this uh, activity is happening. And, you know, they got to tell their story on this meeting. And, and right away, I just had felt that there was something different going on here than the normal haunting that I've seen. You know, uh, Ryan, I've been part of probably 700 investigations in my career as a director of photography for Ghost Hunters and Ghost Brothers and Ghost Hunters Academy. And, you know, this house would had something different to it. Um, it just, it was just different. Um, and, you know, that's shortly after, after our phone call, Steve and I dove head first into uh, the project and we, we really just started, uh, started getting the, the, the ground shoot ready. And, and uh, yeah, the documentary kind of started after that phone call. 
it is so cool with that statement enclosed. I'm like, it, it, the reality of, of this, it brings up so many questions. Okay, the the opening scene is is something of uh, just atypical. I mean, it's a door opening in perfect light, no strings, mirrors, smoke, etc. The real deal, raw footage, right out of the gate, no BS. And then in the film, these people that you wouldn't expect to be, you know, speaking this way of the home as if, if, as if it was a living entity in ways that are telling. Um, the w- one man says, I, I believe there's, there's something that lets you know it's there. Another says, it really grabbed me. It's got its hooks into me. And I think it's Alice, the woman who was in the home, said she uh, just wanted a kind of a simple existence and, and the house reminds me a lot of, um, not to go on a separate direction, a lot of a home I had to leave, but yeah, I get it. Um, she had the house subcontracted, if I'm not mistaken, and I think that goes to show it really doesn't matter the age of the home. A memory that was beyond wild was the deadbolt in the door. Like I said, I have so many questions, but going back to the particular instance, this could be more of an area type of a haunting, correct? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, you got multiple things that are happening here. Uh, You know, a decade worth of investigation at the house from John and Brad and, you know, a compilation of all their evidence. And you gotta, you gotta scratch your head at some of this evidence because, you know, it's, it's plain as day, like you said, it's just there. And, you know, it's, It's really great evidence. Um, You know, the house is interesting. It's, you know, it's an A-frame structure. It's, uh, it's beautiful in the day. You go, you drive up and, you know, there's, there's flowers and trees and, you know, the house is just, you pull in and it just feels great. You you just want to, want to go right in and, you know, you get in there and it's, it's, it's different inside, you know, Alice's, Alice's decoration, it, it's really homey, and she's got, she's got personal uh, pictures from, from people that she's worked with over the years, and there's a lot of, like, a lot of really meaningful artwork, and everything's got a story or a meaning to it. Um, and the house itself was built in the 90s, uh, it's Alice's dream home. She had it built from scratch. Uh, Alice, you know, her story started there. She she bought the land and and she started building her dream home. And right away, things started happening. So you know, the film dives into it. Uh, what is it? Is it the land? Um, you know, you should see the see the film because there's there's a lot going on there. And and uh, and you know we. As, as the filmmakers, Steve and I really wanted to uh, follow what it's like for somebody to go through a haunting, you know, somebody that owns a house that is uh, haunted. So, you know, we, we just we just rolled cameras on on Alice, Brad and John's story. And and what we got was way more than what we thought we were going in for. It was just I mean, we started filming in in. Steve and I are just kind of like, wow, this is different. Even even some of the guys, you know, our crew, just amazing on the ground there. Uh, the film the film crew that we had, uh, at, at, you know, filming uh, at, at Alice's for for the shoot. Um, they they were just, you know, we handpicked them. They're they're people that have worked in the the ghost world for many 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 years. We wanted a small footprint. We knew it was a very personal story, so we had to have, you know, uh, people that that understood the paranormal. And uh, you know, a lot of a lot of our crew even said, "Wow, you know, our sound guy Mike Peebles, he he's like, man, this is this is different. This is this is really really interesting. You know, this is a different story here." And and I feel like we captured that uh, along the way of our journey. Even you know, it was. It was uh, definitely an interesting one, something different than I'm used to used to documenting, you know, and and uh, and we just just had a really great time doing it. Yeah, it is epic, epic movie, sir. And Alice, 
I, I like that she said the house had a lot of activity and she just kind of made peace with it until about 2011. And without getting into much of the movie, can you just kind of explain how there was a, I guess, a research or what pushed her out of the home? Because a lot of people are like, oh, it's another haunted house story. And it's really not. It There's so many additional doors that open and the odd descriptions, experiences and high strangeness closely mirror you know merging realities and it, it, it's very blatant it's some with without getting giving too much away there was a massive change for alice yeah yeah so i'm glad you're talking about the multi-dimension stuff because you know i think we need to talk about that a little more of of uh that in the paranormal um you know the film touches on that um and it's just interesting that, uh, you know, here's Alice. Alice is just one of the most wonderful women I've, I've met in my life. She is just so generous and nice and, and just, a, a, just a beautiful spirit, you know. And, and she's so smart with, uh, you know, with some of, some of the, uh, the metaphysical and some of the paranormal. It's, you know, it kind of took me back how, how well knowledge she is with, you know, some of these theories on, on, on some of, uh, you know, multidimensional and, and, you know, uh, alien and, and UFO and, 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 you know, it, it just, she, I think her experience that she had made her do a deep dive into, to what she experienced. So she read up on, on everything she possibly could just to kind of figure out what, she, what happened to her. she, she had this profound experience. I mean, everything was good uh, in the house. She lived in the house. You know, we can we can say that she moved out after this experience. Um, it was it was major. I mean, she built her dream home, and and basically was so scared of what happened to her one on one particular night. Um, she she just had to leave. She had to leave. And, uh, and she wanted to know what it was that happened to her. She just wants to make sense of it all. And, you know, I don't blame her. I mean, she, I mean, you think about it, put yourself in Alice's shoes. Here you are, you spend all this money on a house. It's your dream home. You're living in it. You have all your stuff in there every day. You, you kind of experience these strange things, but you kind of shrug it off. And then all of a sudden you have this major event happen that's super paranormal and that's it. You're done. You leave your house and you know, it, it's, it's sad. It's not right. Um, as Steve and I, the filmmakers, we're deeply, deeply invested in Alice's story, Alice's uh, case. We wanted to bring her answers. So we got professionals we got some of the best professionals uh, to look at some of the things that they captured over the years. We really wanted and needed to, uh, you know, our main focus is the filmmakers to, to get Alice answers and, you know, uh, to try to get Alice to move back in the house. And, you know, the journey was, was uh, definitely an eye opener for, for Alice as the documentary uh, unfolded and us as the filmmakers, because, you know, this documentary, we, we kind of followed it like a detective story. We really just took every lead or every Avenue and kind of said, well, this is the most accurate that we believe. So we, uh, that's, that's kind of what made the, that made the movie there. I thought it was interesting. Alice, you know, she didn't know what she was up against. If this was a religious experience or like you mentioned, a UFO experience in her dimension. I mean, she read up on everything. Mm -hmm. And and the town that this took place in without giving the name out is a great little town in the Bible Belt, which makes this that much more unique, which brings about the quality of people on this on this project Someone who I followed and then merged into this project is John. He's an investigator. Anyway, how did things go after John was introduced to this? I think they mention it as the Mississippi house in the area, but this is yeah. not this is not a short term project. This is super long term. This is not a weekend. No, no, this isn't your typical uh, T 
TV show, you know, go and film for, you know, a few days and then you're, you're done. This is, this is heavily invested in like, well, for John years, over a decade now, John's been, been documenting the house. Brad came a little later and, uh, those two really put their heads to the grindstone. And man, I got to give it up for those guys because, and all, also all investigators that investigate the paranormal because, you know, your hearts are in it. You want to help people and you do it for free. Like you, you buy gear, you, you, you're investing your time. You, you spend endless hours going through evidence, going through, trying to figure it out, trying to, you know, you're, you're, uh, you're almost, uh, an, you're an ear and, and, and a therapist for, for some people going through hauntings. It's just, it's amazing to see, you know, John and Brad be there for, for Alice and, and, and we, I feel like we really capture that in the film. And that's something that's never really been talked about, uh, as far as the paranormal community. And, and, and that was, that was, you know, a big story in this, in this film. I mean, if you're going, going to watch this film and you, you think you're going to watch another episode of Ghost Hunters or Ghost Adventures or, you know, one of these, one of these, uh, ghost hunting shows, um, it, it's not like that. So, you, you know, it's, you're not going to get your jump scares in there. You're not going to get your, you know, your, your, uh, your, your, uh, just everything told to you on a silver platter. This is a thought provoking piece. You know, we, we give you everything. We give you everything that we learned. And, you know, it's just really cool to see now, even after the movie's been out, what people are, are writing about and in contacting us and letting us know what they, they think is there, what they think is going on with the home, what, uh, you know, people are even doing research and sending me maps. And, you know, it's really cool to see that we did do our homework because I'm getting a lot of the same, same stuff, uh, that we, we had got, you know, that we had found out. So it's just really neat. I think this, this documentary has really hit a, a spot in, in people's hearts and, and, you know, in, in, in the field of the paranormal, that uh, that has never been looked at. So um, yeah, it's it's just it's just been such a cool experience. It it's hit a niche that I think needed to be hit. Um, it, it's almost tapping into another part of the paranormal. It's almost another world entirely. And um, I wanted to discuss if it's okay, Brad Cooney, who lives so close, and and he had activity the first day he visited. Uh, Brad's cell phone footage is so wild, by the way. But um, going along those lines, Brad living so close by, has he had, uh, this is kind of off from the movie, has he had anything happen where he lives? Has this followed him home at all? Yeah, so Brad Cooney, um, he's an investigator that uh, joined John after a few years. Brad had seen um, Alice's story on the news, and it intrigued him. Uh Brad uh, had some UFO experiences when he was in the military, and he's so that's kind of piqued his per, uh, piqued his interest in the paranormal. And uh, you know, he he thought, hey, I want to see what's going on over at this house. And uh, you know, he reached out and he got invited over to the Mississippi house. That's uh, that's kind of his story in a nutshell. And uh, it just, I mean, it's all fate. Like it, it, the, the, that team was brought together just by fate and you know they're they're not even a team they're a family now and and uh you know they call alice queen b and and you know brad uh brad has you know we've talked about things following people home and you know brad has told me that he's never had anything follow him home from the mississippi house but that doesn't mean that i've heard stories from other people that i i believe things have possibly followed them from the mississippi house uh, you know, it, it's, it's hard to tell because it's, it's all, you know, personal experiences. We like to document the experiences on camera when we can. And when we do, you know, that, that helps a lot because that brings a, a lot more credibility to things. So, um, you know, the, the story's evolving here. Uh, things are still happening after the documentary. Um, and it's just, uh, you know, the the Mississippi house there's uh, there's something going on there, and it, it, it's it's just mind boggling 
the multiple layers of things happening. Uh, you know, when I, when I first started hearing about this house, uh, from, from Steve, Brad, John, Alice, it reminded me a lot of something, a, a, a case or a, a location that I'm, I'm deeply, deeply interested in. Uh, and, and that is the Skinwalker Ranch. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, you know, I, I heard the story about Skinwalker Ranch probably 10, 12 years ago. And ever since then, I was hooked on, on, anything skinwalker just from the stories and this is the first time that i've heard of possible ufo activity happening in a location alongside ghosts and uh that's that's really really what kind of got my my radar uh going off with with how different this this case is and how different you know this the, the experiences of what's going on at this house Yes, and that is very, very interesting. I thought something very similar. Um, I, I absolutely love that area of Utah that you you mentioned, and and I thought it was really interesting that you used something that I've used in the past and others, the trigger objects. Um, you know, we put out uh, everything from apples to to uh, sandwiches to you know things for them to play with them. Oh my gosh, here I am calling them them. Um, yeah, it's just, <laughs> you know, and this was also done in the film. Something similar. I think you guys went every extent. You you went, uh, you had contractors, electricians, et cetera, go to the extent of checking the house. And, and, and um, man, you had an experience yourself with a trigger object. I don't want it, but like, holy cow. Yeah. I, yeah. Was, I was intrigued by the way um, the guys answered very interesting. You mentioned the investigators. They when, when they were asked why they would be scared of the home if they've been there so many times, and the response was epic, because we know the power it has and what it's capable of. They just took it to the next level, bringing, uh, in my opinion, where it went, the direction. They didn't hoard it for themselves. Other people were brought into the mix, and I think that's important. Who called the shots, or did that just kind of naturally happen? Uh, you know, so I got to give credit to Alice. Um, Alice, for you know, off camera before the documentary, she she brought in some people that uh, that checked the level of her house uh, many years before when you know some of these things were moving. Uh, and you know, Alice kind of was was uh, asking about certain people that you know she she really wanted to talk to. And, you know, for the documentary, um, Steve and I, uh, we, we brought in, um, you know, the, 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 the professionals. We got uh, Steve landed the interview with Dr. Dai um, and, uh, and, you know, uh, Michael Denon was somebody that Alice had read his book and, and uh, was deeply interested in from his take on, on uh, Paranormal. And, uh, and, you know, just having these, these experts come into the home and, and take a deeper look at what's going on, uh, you know, it just, you got to find out what it is. And, you know, if it is a faulty light switch or if it's, you know, a broken step or if it's, uh, you know, some, some, some kind of, maybe there's, maybe there's chemicals in the house. You know, Steve and I went in and did an extensive search on the, on the home and, and it, we, we really want to find out what's going on so we can bring that piece to Alice. You know, that's the number one goal. And if we, if we found out, I mean, I'll tell you here, Ryan, you know, Steve and I didn't know what we were getting into. We, we started the documentary and it was just kind of like, well, you know, we don't know Brad, Alice, and John. We, we have a good feeling about them, but, you know, we're going to have to do our homework once we get there. And, and, you know, we got, we, the first day of filming, you know, we got there, boots on the ground. Steve and I had to do a sweep of the house to make sure, you know, there's no funny business going on because that's Steve and I's credibility. Here we are. We're about to invest our time and resources and efforts and, you know, no sleep and everything that goes into filmmaking for the next few months, if not a year, you know. And uh, we want to know what's going on in the house. And if that is true, we are going to tell that story. 
So, you know, we did our sweep of the house. And, you know, to our surprise, there was no wires. There was nothing going on. There was no, you know, obvious explanations for some, you know, the multiple things going on there. So, so you know, it got Steve's, Steve's stamp of approval. So, um, you know, and then, you know, I, you know, I, I've been alongside Steve for many, many years. So I, I too have, have that eye and, you know, the both of us kind of said, holy cow, you know, this is, these guys aren't pulling the wool over our eyes. So I guess we're, we're going to, you know, try to, you know, try to figure out this through, through contractors and through electricians, anything that we saw pop up. And, you know, when we saw the evidence, if we're like, well, they could have done it with this. So that's what we implemented. You know, if, if this happened, you know, say, say something happens in the house, well, you know, let's talk to this person and see if there's a logical explanation for it. So we, that's, that's the approach we took. I mean, I think a lot of ghost stuff and, you know, paranormal stuff done so sens- sensationalized, you know, this is the first time we really wanted to just kind of say, Hey, you know, like, let's just step back here and, and, and think about this a little more and think about this evidence and see, see what, it possibly could be from a different angle. And you know what? We, we really kept the, the skeptics in mind. I mean, myself, I'm skeptic. I'm a skeptical believer. I, I, I kind of call myself a skeptical believer. I've had many experiences happen to me now over the last few years. So I'm more on the believer side, but Steve's still a skeptic. I mean, he's, he's pretty hardcore skeptic. And, uh, you know, we, we, we had a skeptic, uh, editor, uh, a lot of our crew is skeptics, so you know we have to we have to to see both sides. As a documentary, we're just telling the truth. We just want to see what the story is, and and the story let the story shine. And and you know we went in there, and and that's that was our goal all along. So you have the skeptic side, and then you have the believer side. And you know we started out the whole documentary with Miss uh, Mary Alice, who is just this most beautiful soul. Uh, asking her if she believed in ghosts, and uh, you know she uh, she she's she's awesome. Yeah, they. It's so cool that I believe it was Steve. There was kind of a kind of an off camera yet filmed moment where you kind of asked him straight up, like, "What do you think is going on?" And if you don't mind me saying so, he's like, "I think it's a hoax." Let's like you know, let's get to the bottom of it. It was so cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, that moment that you're talking about is. Uh, you know, it was just so raw and so just, just amazing to see Steve pop into his uh, just detective investigator. I love that part that you're talking about because that is like just the Steve that um, that I've seen for many years. That you know sometimes gets edited out of TV, and it's just you see his wheel. You know the the gears grinding, like, what the, what was that? What, what happened there? And, uh, and, you know, it, it was really cool to see his thinking process. And that's Steve. That was Steve in the raw. That was all of us in the raw. It was, it was just an awesome moment for the film and for, for me, you know, uh, and working with Brad and John and Alice and, and, uh, Steve, it was just, it was, it was a really cool moment there. The whole film was a lot of fun to, to do. And, um, yeah, the, the, a lot of a lot of moments like that too that we we had on camera um, that didn't get used. A lot of fun moments in the film. Um, maybe we maybe we do another cut later or something to to give some more of that because because it, yeah, it's just it's just really cool to to document something and and be able to have the freedom to kind of kind of have have moments and and not worry about a format and just. You know, documentary is so freeing and creative, and and I, I, you know, I think that's another success for us. Yeah, the 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 lengths that you went, like like you mentioned, you got scientists involved. You were looking at water aspects, underground moving water. I mean, marine dinosaurs found in the area. You definitely didn't leave <laughs> any, any stones untouched. Perhaps there's more to it. And and an older lady, without going, again, I'm, it's so hard not to give too much away. She lived nearby. Yeah. She saw something similar. Let's just say similar, a light that was bright as the sun. Do you think 
these large deposits of possible energy or the past historical evidence with the land could have more to do with all this than everything else, in your opinion? I guess it's a hard question, but what do you personally think, Kendall? That's a good, that's a very good question. Um, so I got into the paranormal 15 years ago and, you know, I answered a Craigslist ad to ghost hunters and I got on the show as a camera B and I've been working on ghost hunters for many, many years ever since. And a lot of these ghost shows. And when I started back then, I thought, okay, I can find, I had an experience a long time ago. I can finally get answers to what happened to me. And, you know, some of this ghost, paranormal, alien, everything, you know, maybe I can get a little bit of answers here. No, that is not the case. <laughs> and along with this house, it's opened up more questions than I've gotten the answers. Because what happens is you get one thing that, that you get in a slight answer for, and then bam, okay, there's another thing that just happened, and now i got to go down this rabbit hole and try to figure that out. So for me, personally, at this house, there's so many things going on. There's so, like, so many possibilities. If I were to like step back and look at it all, I really think that there's a possibility of multidimensional stuff happening at the house. I, I think that it might be some kind of, you know, uh, intersection of, of some sort where things pass through, come visit for a, a few and then leave because there's so many different, different personalities happening there of, 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 of stuff. Uh, multidimensional, um, I think there might be some, some haunting stuff. I, you know, it's hard to tell. I mean, it's, you know, you're kind of dipping into what are ghosts and what are, you know, is, is, who, nobody's ever going to know really what a ghost is. You know, are they demons? Are they deceased relatives? Are they, is, you know, is it land? Is it the land? You know, is it, elemental I, you know there you could go down the list and and try to figure it out um in my brain there's something happening there uh it's there's there's stuff that's happening closer to the experiences of people that have had alien and ufo encounters and there's other ghostly stuff that i've experienced on my my uh work with ghost hunters so I think, yeah, I think there's there's two things, maybe three things happening at the house, and it might be some kind of land. I mean, we found information on the land. You know, there's there's definitely uh, stuff underneath the house that that could be used as a conduit. You know, we we uh, you know Alice isn't the only person experiencing stuff in her area. Um, is this a hot spot? Yeah, it is a hot spot because in our research, uh, we did a, you know, you can see it in the film. We, we actually, this is a little like uh behind the scenes tip on that, uh, criminal board that we used. Uh, we mm -hmm. con I, I contacted MUFON and I got every single UFO activity in that area. And I put a push pin of all the UFO activity in Mississippi and in the surrounding area. And uh, after uh, the visual of that was enough to say, oh, okay, this is, this is a hot spot for sure. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of possibilities. Um, I, I like the idea of multidimensional because it, it kind of makes sense to me. I mean, what if there's, there's a thin veil in certain areas because of, of land elements or whatever, whatever the energy is, or, you know, what if there's another parallel universe or some other dimension that is kind of bleeding into ours in certain areas and maybe they can communicate with you The you know, the, the evidence that we've gathered there that, 
Brad and John have, have seen and gathered, it's intelligent. And John is clearly teaching the house to speak back. So what is the house? Something intelligent. I, I don't know. But it's, it's produced, and it, produce, it continues to produce. Uh, and, and it's just fascinating to, to see it for your own, for your own eyes. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly what I think is going on there. Cause there's, you know, the paranormal, it's hard to even pinpoint anything. You know, I, I can't put my stamp on that, but, uh, but my gut tells me that it's possibly multidimensional. It's possibly some kind of energy, uh, happening at the house. And maybe that's spiking up, you know, some of these, uh, some of these entities, you know, maybe there's a, there's a connection between the energy from a multidimensional portal opening up to possibly fueling a manifestation of entities. I don't know. You know, it's awesome to think about. And I think we need to get science involved closer to be able to look at this. And this is a great house to study, man. I mean, it's being studied 24 seven. It is, uh, it, it's just, you know, it's just really a really great controlled study. And John and Brad, they're lucky to have it. Alice turned the keys over to them after she left the house in 2011 and they've been studying it ever since. So, so they're, they're probably some of the only people I know that, that have a, a, a you know, a frequently, uh, highly act, active house that they have cameras on and, and, you know, devices and everything, uh, studying the house 24 seven. Yeah. It's like having keys to like the science, the ongoing science project. I'm super jealous. And the, you know, as, as far as the area being active, I mean, modern physics is definitely involved, but as far as the area being active, I mean, heck you have Calvin Parker's appearance, you know, that a lot of mm -hmm. people forget is nearby. Um, you guys hit on so many, so many things, St. Elmo's fire, all, all kinds of neat things with ball lightning, which I think is, you know, definitely some electricity discharging in odd, possibly paranormal ways. But most of what we know, and this is mentioned in the film, most of what we know about modern physics can be explained by other dimensions is the potential for maybe even that extraterrestrial element there? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Alice, Alice has had many, many uh, experiences, not just the one that made her move out with light. And, um, you know, we deep dive into the film, so definitely go see the film to see what Alice is talking about these lights. But there's, there's, there's a few things happening at the house that go along with some other people's experiences with UFOs. And that's why we talked to Calvin Parker, who is a UFO, uh, sorry, an alien abductee. Um, and such a great, guy. his experience was sort of similar to Alice's. So, you know, we're trying to put the pieces together of what's going on in the house mm -hmm. by talking to all these people because, you know, it's, it starts to sway on the side of some kind of extraterrestrial, uh, some kind of intelligent uh, life forms. I, you know, it, this is complex. It's just, it, it's a complex story. It's a complex situation. And it, it, it really needs uh, to be looked at by science because, it, you know, it, it, it's so, it's, it's just so bizarre of what has happened to Alice and in her house. Um, and just looking at it from a science perspective will help maybe unravel the, you know, peel back the onion or some kind of discovery that would be made in, 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 in getting closer to, to what those lights are. And, and that is, you know, that is the, that was, that's the goal of the documentary is to see, what is it that's going on at Alice's home? Yeah, there's a lot going on there. And there's, you know, the the modern physics element. And like you mentioned, we've been dancing around this elephant in the room in a spacesuit or this extraterrestrial. 
aspect possibly and just when you're totally ready to engage with that particular aspect you guys have a psychic with no idea of anything which i thought was genius and i don't want to give away too much but they just invited somebody with no idea of absolutely anything and where it went from there whoa issues with possible precognitive intelligence and it manifesting in dreams and it gets deeper than that um did you guys have any personal experiences with any precognitive intelligences like that psychic did when she arrived at the house? You know, uh, no, I didn't have anything happen to me before I went to the house. And, you know, Steve, I don't believe he, he had anything happen to him before we stepped foot in the house. Um, yeah, Joe Morris, our psychic that we um, that we had uh, come to the house. Uh, we, I met her, uh, Vera and I, uh, my wife Vera. We used to do a podcast a long time ago, and and Jill, we met Jill through our podcast, and she was always somebody who stood out to me as credible. Um, she does a lot of uh, police cases and unsolved uh, criminal um, cases, and uh, and so. Uh, when the, the time came to that, you know, Steve wasn't on board with a psychic. He's never been on board with psychics. But for this house, we wanted to kind of hit every angle and kind of, uh, you know, see, see what, see what a psychic would say. Cause, you know, it, you never know. They might hit on something, but we, in the film, you know, we were kind of like, well, let's challenge it. You know, if somebody's going to pre, uh, pre you know pre research the house and you know we we send somebody in that has knowledge of it pre coming in then then they're going to give us everything that we've we've uh you know they they see online or you know that they've heard about the house so you know before the film we actually had uh those guys take a lot of their stuff down because we knew that we were going to have people coming in and we didn't want anybody to pre research anything about the house we didn't we wanted people coming in with with zero knowledge of where they're going and that was that was the case for our psychic jill you know i i called her and i was like hey you know i i gotta ask do you mind um flying to a place that you're not going to know where you're going and coming and doing the shoot <laughs> and not knowing anything about it and you know she was so so great about yeah i'm i'm definitely down thank god she trusted us you know we're like you know putting her on a plane to to some random city to to you know some random location that she has nothing to you know knowing nothing about and uh it was really neat to see uh when she came in i mean we filmed for for hours with her and uh some of the stuff that she picked up on was just uh was just amazing and it really added to the documentary just to give that insight you know what does a psychic say you know we have we have the professionals on the um scientific side uh and and what does you know what does somebody with uh with extra you know sensory uh somebody with a psychic ability uh somebody that can tap into possibly the other side what do they say? So everything you saw in the film um, with what she picked up on, I mean, I 150% can promise you that was all real. We never gave her any kind of clues, any kind of information. I mean, you could see her face when she's like, I mean, we just kind of took her from the airport. She landed. She got in a car. Our producer, Paul, picked her up and, uh, and filmed her. And uh, she got to the house. I'm ready. You know, I, I'm waiting for her outside. She gets out of the car, walks in the house. She doesn't know whether to ring the doorbell or not. She meets Alice for the first time. I mean, that you just don't do that in production. It's just so you never know what's going to happen. And that's kind of how we took this, this doc. It was fly by the seat of your pants. And uh, that was kind of challenging, you know. And, and, and it is really cool to see uh, how – that turned out and how well that turned out. And it was really neat um, that it ties in with the rest of the story. And really, I mean, this, this house or this, this energy gave it to us. Cause I mean, the whole story just unfolded for us 
really well. You guys have to see this this show. It's pretty amazing. And um, one thing she did say that I thought was interesting for a psychic is that a lot of dimensions were going on in the house. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And <laughs> um, I, a question I have to ask, you know, it's, it was mentioned somewhere in the in the documentary, which is so in-depth, and I think that was so well handled and so well managed, bringing somebody who had no idea of anything, by the way. There were some questions being asked about a, of another fire, and a fire, mm-hmm. de- a fire detector went off in the home, first time ever, and it was mentioned that these entities, if they could burn the house down, they would with their... Uh, it brings up um, some other individuals, a personal friend of mine and myself who had things destroyed by fire. Was this something that you had heard before? Or was this the first time that you'd heard that kind of kind of a comment? Yeah, not to, not to spoil the film too much, but, um, but yeah, what, what you... What you're talking about there, that moment was a first for us. Uh, the, stu- the, the events that happened in that moment have never happened before that. And never in, until this day have not happened uh, again. Um, I mean, I check in with Brad, John, and Alice all the time, and they tell me you know, what's happening in the house still. And that event still has not happened. So that was a one-off event at that time. And, um, you know, we, we took it serious. Uh, that is a serious, serious, um, uh, piece of knowledge or, or, you know, advice that the, the psychic Jill Morris had, had, um, given Alice and, uh, and we took it, we took it serious. Alice actually bought, you know, extra, extra cameras and extra, um, you know, some, some fire, fire, uh, prevention, uh, pieces for the, for the home after that, because, you know, that's, that's kind of a, a big deal. You, you, somebody tells you they they want to burn down your house. You, you kind of take that serious, whether it's a, uh, a ghost or, or a human, you know, anybody saying that, that's, that's something that, that you really take serious. So, um, yeah, it's startling. Uh, it was very negative, um, and that 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 goes along with the multiple things and per- personalities coming through there. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff in the house is is very very uh, nice and 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 um, what do I want to say? Just just very very caring. You know, you get the, you get that, but Every once in a while, you'll get you'll get something that that uh, that has a little negativity to it, and and that's what the medium, uh, sorry, the psychic was picking up on. So so well, so well documented, so well made, such an epic film, and the footage, you guys. I want to talk about it, but I just can't. You have to see it. It's stuff that will blow your mind, and um, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on the podcast. Kendall, where can people keep up with what you're doing, keep up with the project, purchase the movie? I wouldn't rent it. I'd buy it. And um, anything else you have going on? Yeah. So um, the movie is available on 26 different uh, video on demand platforms. So anywhere you can rent movies, you can rent this. You can even rent this in in, uh, video stores. Believe it or not, there's some video stores still around. You can get that there. Uh, You can get it on Best Buy. Uh, dot com, but the best place to get it, and yeah, you're right, you should buy it because um, you know I've watched it many, many times, and you know uh, we made the movie. Uh, it, it's something that you're going to want to watch uh, just over and over again to to actually see different angles of it. You know, I'll give you a little flip tip. We left some stuff in there, little cookies for you uh, of of what could be paranormal. We don't know. Um, and, and we left that in there for you. So, so you might see that on a second watch or a third watch. So, um, it's, it's a fun movie to watch. Uh, and, and yeah, you can buy that, um, on iTunes. You can get it on, uh, let's see here. It's on iTunes. Um, it's on Google play. It's on, uh, it's, it's, uh, go to the house in between.com. Uh, that's the house in and we have all the links and, and, um, 
everywhere you can watch it. And if you're wanting to watch it overseas, uh, the best place to catch that is on Vimeo, uh, the Vimeo on demand spot there. Uh, but the house in between.com is the best place to, uh, to check it out and see where you can, where you can uh, watch it. And then also, yeah, sign up because we will keep you involved. And if, you know, we do a part two or, you know, we got some t-shirts and some hats and stuff for sale in the store. And, uh, you know, it's a little community right now of a lot of people uh, chiming in on, on uh, our message board of what, what's going on in the movie and stuff. So it's, it's fun. Uh, Facebook, you can, you can follow the house in between on Facebook, uh, Instagram. Um, yeah. So you can find us everywhere. We're out there. Um, the movie is uh, is a fun watch. I think you you guys will like it if you're into the paranormal, or even if you're not into the paranormal. Um, it's it's a good movie to to uh, watch with, even with your family. So you can that's a movie you can watch with your watch your watch with your kids and in your your young ones and stuff. So um, yeah, and as far as future projects, uh, my wife Vera. Um, Welton and I are, are working on some stuff, uh, that, that is going to be fun. And hopefully, you know, right, right now we're, we're all on lockdown. So, um, you know, once, once we're, it's, it's safe to go out and start working again, we'll, we'll start, uh, working on these future projects here. So, um, yeah, I'd love to give a shout out to Vera, my wife. She, she was my, uh, rock in, in helping make this film, she uh she's one of the producers on the film and she just i mean she did such a phenomenal job helping craft some of the the segments in the in the film and and she she just she was such a such a major force in this uh Steve just awesome co-director with me um Alice and 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 Brad and John just awesome people to work with uh just everybody that came into the house for this film, I love to give a shout out to. I, I, it was just, it's just such a unique experience. Um, you know, it was, it was amazing to work with all these different people and and just have the kind of love and, and care that they they gave us when we came in. I mean, they they opened their hearts to us and their and, and telling their story and that really made all the difference on camera. So you know, and 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 um, just. There's so many people to thank for this. Uh, Corey uh, Frost, our amazing editor. Um, Joe Miller, our sound designer. Uh, yeah, just just so many people to thank. And and uh, yeah, go ahead and check out the film. Go to our website, thehouseinbetween.com. And the the website is so cool because, like you said, all the links are active and swiftly will take you to however you want to watch it. Anyway, I'm so glad you all did the project. It's amazing. And um, I have to agree with you, your wife. I think she did the illustrations, which were so cool. Um, yeah, you're right. She did. That's awesome. Yeah. Man, I, I can't wait to um, keep in touch with you and the project. And I can't thank you enough for coming on. Take care, Kendall, and uh, talk soon, I hope. Hey, thanks, Ryan. I really appreciate it. This was fun. Current blast off in my time machine. Third eye feeling like it need Vizine. Blast off. Blast off. Blast off. Blast off. Blast off in my time machine. Third eye feeling like it need Vizine. Blast off. Blast off. Blast off. Blast off. Come blast off in my time machine. Third eye feeling like it need Vizine. Blast off. Blast off. Blast off. Blast off. Look. Vizine for the third eye. It's levels and you can catch me with a bird's fly. Blast off in the time machine. Blowing on that light green straight line of beans. Beasy, take it easy what they tell me. Boy, I'm so deep, not even Lucifer can help me. And I'm going so hard, not even Lucifer can stop me. Talking about some Somali, Maserati, some paparazzi. I'm going kamikaze as soon as a nigga trip. Two step, I do mines like this. DeLorean, historian, her story. We partying back to the future like Michael J. Fox. I throw that cop, she feel some type of way. She hot, but it ain't gonna change a thing with this pimp. I ain't with that simping. Can't you see we on a mission, baby? Gun blast off in my time machine. Third eye feeling like it need Vizine. Blast off. Blast off. Blast off. Blast off. Come blast off in my time
time machine Third eye feeling like you need vaccine Blast off You know, uh, interdimension. You know, merging realities, and it, it, it's very blatant. It's some with without getting giving too much away, there was a massive change for Alice. Yeah, yeah. So I'm glad you're talking about the multi dimension stuff because you know I think we need to talk about that a little more of of uh, that in the paranormal. Um, you know, the film touches on that. Um, and it's just interesting that, uh, you know, here's Alice. Alice is just one of the most wonderful women I've, I've met in my life. She is just so generous and nice and, and just, a, a, just a beautiful spirit, you know. And, and she's so smart with, uh, you know, with some of, some of the, uh, the metaphysical and some of the paranormal. It's, you know, it kind of took me back how... how well knowledge she is with you know some of these theories on 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 some of uh you know multi-dimensional and and you know uh alien and and ufo and 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 you know it, it just she i think her experience that she had made her do a deep dive into to what she experienced so she read up on on everything she possibly could just to kind of figure out what what happened to her she she had this profound experience i mean everything was good uh in the house she lived in the house you know we can we can say that she moved out after this experience um it was it was major i mean she built her dream home and and basically was so scared of what happened to her one on one particular night um she she just had to leave she had to leave and uh, and she wanted to know what it was that happened to her. She just wants to make sense of it all. And you know, I don't blame her. I mean, she. I mean, you think about it. Put yourself in Alice's shoes. Here you are. You spend all this money on a house. It's your dream home. You're living in it. You have all your stuff in there. Every day you you kind of experience these strange things, but you kind of shrug it off. And then all of a sudden you have this major event happen that's super paranormal and that's it. You're done. You leave your house and you know, it, it's, it's sad. It's not right. Um, as Steve and I, the filmmakers, we're deeply, deeply invested in Alice's story, Alice's uh, case. We wanted to bring her answers. So we got professionals. We got some of the best professionals uh, to look at some of the things that they captured over the years. We really wanted and needed to, uh, you know, our main focus is the filmmakers to, to get Alice answers and, you know, uh, to try to get Alice to move back in the house. And, you know, the journey was, was uh, definitely an eye opener for, for Alice as the documentary uh, unfolded and us as the filmmakers, because, you know, this documentary, we, we kind of followed it like a detective story. We really just 
took every lead or every avenue and kind of said, well, this is the most accurate that we believe. So we, uh, that's, that's kind of what made the, that made the movie there. Yeah. And the, I thought it was interesting. Alice, you know, she didn't know what she was up against. If this was a religious experience or like you mentioned, a UFO experience in her dimension. I mean, she read up on everything mm-hmm. and, and the town that this took place in without giving the name out is a great little town in the Bible belt, which makes this that much more unique. And, um, which brings about the quality of people on this, on this project, someone who I followed and then merged into this project is John. And, um, he's an investigator. Anyway, how did things go after John was introduced to this? I think they mentioned it as the Mississippi house in the area, but this is not, this is not a short term project. This is super long term. This is not a weekend. No, no, this isn't your typical, uh, TV show, you know, go and film for, you know, a few days and then you're, you're done. This is, this is heavily invested in like, well, for John years, over a decade now, John's been, been documenting the house. Brad came a little later and, uh, those two really put their heads to the grindstone and man, I got to give it up for those guys because, and all also all investigators that investigate the paranormal because, you know, your hearts are in it. You want to help people, and you do it for free. Like you, you buy gear. You, you, you're investing your time. You, you spend endless hours going through evidence, going through trying to figure it out. Trying to, you know, you're you're uh, you're almost uh, an you're an ear and in, in, in a therapist for for some people going through haunting. It's just it's amazing to see you know John and Brad be there for for Alice and and. And we, I feel like we really capture that in the film. And that's something that's never really been talked about uh, as far as the paranormal community. And, and, and that, was, that was, you know, a big story in this, in this film. I mean, if you're going, going to watch this film and you, you think you're going to watch another episode of Ghost Hunters or Ghost Adventures or, you know, one of these, one of these uh, ghost hunting shows, um, it, it's not like that. So, you, you know, it's, you're not going to get your jump scares in there. You're not going to get your, you know, your, your, uh, your, your, uh, just everything told to you on a silver platter. This is a thought provoking piece. You know, we, we give you everything. We give you everything that we learned. And, you know, it's just really cool to see now, even after the movie's been out, what people are, are writing about and in contacting us and letting us know what they, they think is there what they think is going on with the home what uh you know people are even doing research and sending me maps and you know it's really cool to see that we did do our homework because i'm getting a lot of the same same stuff uh that we we had got you know that we had found out so it's just really neat i think this this documentary has really hit a, a spot in in people's hearts and and you know in in, in the field of the paranormal that uh, that has never been looked at. So um, yeah, it's it's just it's just been such a cool experience. It it's hit a niche that I think needed to be hit. Um, it, it's almost tapping into another part of the paranormal. It's almost another world entirely. And um, I wanted to discuss if it's okay. Brad Cooney, who lives so close, and he, I mean, this is kind of how he got involved in the paranormal and he had activity the first day he visited uh, Brad's cell phone footage is so wild by the way, but um, going along those lines, Brad living so close by has he had, uh, this is kind of off from the movie. Has he had anything happen where he lives? Has this followed him home at all? Yeah. So Brad Cooney, um, he's, an investigator that uh, joined John after a few years. Brad had seen um, Alice's story on the news, and it intrigued him. Uh, Brad uh, had some UFO experiences when he was in the military, and he's so that's kind of piqued his per, uh, piqued his interest in the paranormal. And uh, you know, he he thought, hey, I want to see what's going on over at this house. And uh, you know, he reached out and. He got invited over to the Mississippi house. That's uh, that's kind of his story in a nutshell. 
And uh, it's just, I mean, it's all fate. Like, it, it, the, 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 that team was brought together just by fate. And, you know, they're, they're not even a team. They're a family now. And, and uh, you know, they call Alice Queen B. And, and you know, Brad, uh, Brad has, you know, we've talked about things following people home. And, you know, Brad has told me that he's never had anything follow him home from the Mississippi house. But that doesn't mean that I've heard stories from other people that I I believe things have possibly followed them from the Mississippi house. Uh, you know, it, it's it's hard to tell because it's it's all you know personal experiences. We like to document the experiences on camera when we can, and when we do, you know that that helps a lot because that brings a, a lot more credibility to things. So um, you know, the, the story's evolving here. Uh, things are still happening after the documentary, um, and it's just uh, you know the the Mississippi House. There's uh, there's something going on there, and it, it, it's it's just mind boggling the multiple layers of things happening. Uh, you know when I when I first started hearing about this house uh, from from Steve, Brad, John, Alice. It reminded me a lot of something, that, a, a, a case or a, a location that I'm, I'm deeply, deeply interested in, uh, and and that is the Skinwalker Ranch. Mm-hmm. Um, I just, you know, I, I heard the story about Skinwalker Ranch probably 10, 12 years ago, and ever since then, I was hooked on, on anything Skinwalker just from the stories. And this is the first time that I've heard of possible UFO activity happening in a location alongside ghosts. And uh, that's that's really, really what kind of got my my radar uh, going off with with how different this this case is and how different, you know, this the, the experiences of what's going on at this house. Yes, and that is very, very interesting. I thought something very similar. Um, I, I absolutely love that area of Utah that you you mentioned, and and I thought it was really interesting that you used something that I've used in the past and others, the trigger objects. Um, you know, we put out uh, everything from apples to to uh, sandwiches to you know things for them to play with them. Oh my gosh, here I am calling them them. Um, yeah, it's just, <laughs> you know, and this was also done in the film. Something similar. I think you guys went every extent. You you went, uh, you had contractors, electricians, et cetera, go to the extent of checking the house. And, and, and um, man, you had an experience yourself with the trigger object. I don't want it, but like, holy cow. Yeah. I, yeah. Was, I was intrigued by the way um, the guys answered very interesting. You mentioned the investigators. They when, when they were asked why they would be scared of the home if they've been there so many times, and the response was epic, because we know the power it has and what it's capable of. They just took it to the next level, bringing, uh, in my opinion, where it went, the direction. They didn't hoard it for themselves. Other people were brought into the mix, and I think that's important. Who called the shots, or did that just kind of naturally happen? Uh, you know, so I got to give credit to Alice. Um, Alice, for you know, off camera before the documentary, she she brought in some people that uh, that checked the level of her house uh, many years before when you know some of these things were moving. Uh, and you know, Alice kind of was was uh, asking about certain people that you know she she really wanted to talk to. And, you know, for the documentary, um, Steve and I, uh, we, we brought in, um, you know, the, 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 the professionals. We got uh, Steve landed the interview with Dr. Dye. Um, and, uh, and, you know, uh, Michael Denon was somebody that Alice had read his book and, and uh, was deeply interested in from his take on, on uh, paranormal and uh and you know just having these these experts come into the home and and take a deeper look at what's going on 
uh, you know, it just, you got to find out what it is. And, you know, if it is a faulty light switch or if it's, you know, a broken step or if it's, uh, you know, some, some, some kind of maybe there's maybe there's chemicals in the house. You know, Steve and I went in and did an extensive search on that on the home, and and it, we we really want to find out what's going on so we can bring that piece to Alice. You know, that's the number one goal. And if we if we found out, I mean, I'll tell you here, Ryan. You know, Steve and I didn't know what we were getting into. We we started the documentary, and it was just kind of like, well, you know, we don't know Brad, Alice, and John. We we have a good feeling about them, but you know we're gonna have to do our homework once we get there. And and you know we got we the first day of filming, you know we got there boots on the ground. Steve and I had to do a sweep of the house to make sure you know there's no funny business going on because that's Steve and I's credibility. Here we are, we're about to invest our time and resources and efforts and you know no sleep and everything that goes into filmmaking for the next few months, if not a year, you know. And uh, we want to know what's going on in the house. And if that is true, we are going to tell that story. So, you know, we did our sweep of the house. And, you know, to our surprise, there was no wires. There was nothing going on. There was no, you know, obvious explanations for some, you know, the multiple things going on there. So, so you know, it got Steve's, Steve's stamp of approval. So, um, you know, and then, you know, I, you know I, I've been alongside Steve for many, many years. So, I, I too have have that eye, and you know the both of us kind of said, "Holy cow, you know this is these guys aren't pulling the wool over our eyes." So I guess we're we're gonna you know try to you know try to figure out this through through contractors and through electricians. Anything that we saw pop up, and you know when we saw the evidence, if we're like, "Well, they could have done it with this," so that's what we implemented. You know, if if this happened. You know, say say something happens in the house. Well, you know, let's talk to this person and see if there's a logical explanation for it. So we that's that's the approach we took. I mean, I think a lot of ghost stuff and you know paranormal stuff done so sens- sensationalized. You know, this is the first time we really wanted to just kind of say, hey, you know, like let's just step back here and. And and think about this a little more, and think about this evidence, and see see what it possibly could be from a different angle. And you know what? We we really kept the the skeptics in mind. I mean, myself, I'm skeptic. I'm a skeptical believer. I I I kind of call myself a skeptical believer. I've had many experiences happen to me now over the last few years, so I'm more of on the believer side, but. He's still a skeptic. I mean, he's he's pretty hardcore skeptic, and uh, you know, we 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 had a skeptic uh, editor. A lot of our crew is skeptic, so you know, we have to we have to to see both sides. As a documentary, we're just telling the truth. We just want to see what the story is, and and the story let the story shine. And and you know, we went in there, and and that's that was our goal all along. So you have the skeptic side. And then you have the believer side, and you know we started out the whole documentary with Miss uh, Mary Alice, who is just this most beautiful soul, uh, asking her if she believed in ghosts, and uh, you know she uh, she she's she's awesome. Yeah, they. It's so cool that I believe it was Steve. <laughs> there was kind of a kind of an off camera yet filmed moment where you kind of asked him straight up, like, "What do you think is going on?" And if you don't mind me saying so, he's like, I think it's a hoax. Let's like, you know, let's get to the bottom of it. It was so cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, that moment that you're talking about is, uh, you know, it was just so raw and so just, just amazing to see Steve pop into his uh, just detective investigator. I love that part that you're talking about because that is like just the Steve that, um, that I've seen for many years that, you know, sometimes gets edited out of TV and it's just, you see these wheel, it, you know, the, the gears grinding, like what the, what was that? What, what happened there? And, uh, and you know, it, it was really cool to see his thinking process. And that's Steve. That was Steve in the raw. That was all of us in the raw. It was, it was just an awesome moment for the film and for, for me, you know, uh, and working with Brad and John and Alice and, 
and uh, Steve. It was just it was it was a really cool moment there. The whole film was a lot of fun to to do, and um, yeah, the, the, a lot of a lot of moments like that too that we we had on camera um, that didn't get used. A lot of fun moments in the film. Um, maybe we maybe we do another cut later or something to to give some more of that because because it, yeah, it's just it's just really cool to to document something and, and be able to have the freedom to kind of, kind of have, have moments and, and not worry about a format and just, you know, documentary is so freeing and creative. And, and I, I, you know, I think that's another success for us for this. Yeah. The, the, the lengths that you went, like, like you mentioned, you got scientists involved. You were looking at water aspects, underground moving water. I mean, marine dinosaurs found in the area. You definitely didn't leave any, <laughs> any stones untouched. Um, th- perhaps there's more to it. And, and an older lady without going again, I'm, it's so hard not to give too much away. She lived nearby. Yeah. She saw something similar. Let's just say similar, a light that was bright as the sun. Do you think that personally, um, obviously physics are involved. There's more to it. And the recreations that you did showed that this is far beyond anything that humans could do. In my opinion, the methods were epic. Do you think that these large deposits of possible energy or the past historical evidence with the land could have more to do with all this than everything else in your opinion? I guess it's a hard question, but what do you personally think, Kendall? That's a good, that's a very good question. Um, so I got into the paranormal 15 years ago and, you know, I answered a Craigslist ad to ghost hunters and I got on the show as a camera B and I've been working on ghost hunters for many, many years ever since. And a lot of these ghost shows. And when I started back then, I thought, okay, I can find, I had an experience a long time ago. I can finally get answers to what happened to me. And, you know, some of this ghost, paranormal, alien, everything, you know, maybe I can get a little bit of answers here. No, that is not the case. <laughs> and along with this house, it's opened up more questions than I've gotten answers because what happens is you get one thing that, that you get in a slight answer for and then bam, okay, there's another thing that just happened and now I got to go down this rabbit hole and try to figure that out. So for me personally at this house, there's so many things going on. There's so like so many possibilities. Um, if I were to like step back and look at it all, I really think that there's a possibility of multidimensional stuff happening at the house. I, I think that it might be some kind of, you know, uh, intersection of, of some sort where things pass through, come visit for a few and then leave because there's so many different different personalities happening there of, 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 of stuff, uh, multidimensional. Um, I think there might be some, some haunting stuff. I, you know, it's hard to tell. I mean, it's, you know, you're kind of dipping into what are ghosts and what are, you know, is it, who, nobody's ever going to know really what a ghost is, you know, are they demons? Are they deceased relatives? Are they, is, you know, is it land, is it the land, you know, is it elemental, I, you know, there, you could go down the list and, and try to figure it out. Um, in my brain, there's something happening there. Uh, it's, there's, there's stuff that's happening closer to the experiences of people that have had alien and UFO encounters. And there's other ghostly stuff that I've experienced on my, my, uh, work with ghost hunters. So I think, yeah, I think there's, there's two things, maybe three things happening at the house and it might be some kind of land. I mean, we found 
information on the land. You know, there's there's definitely uh, stuff underneath the house that that could be used as a conduit. You know, we we uh, you know Alice isn't the only person experiencing stuff in her area. Um, is this a hot spot? Yeah, it is a hot spot because in our research, uh, we did a, you know, you can see it in the film. We, we actually, this is a little like uh behind the scenes tip on that, uh, criminal board that we used. Uh, we mm -hmm. con I, I contacted MUFON and I got every single UFO activity in that area. And I put a push pin of all the UFO activity in Mississippi and in the surrounding area. And uh, after uh, the visual of that was enough to say, okay, this is, this is a hot spot for sure. So yeah, there's, there's a lot of possibilities. Um, I, I like the idea of multidimensional because it, it kind of makes sense to me. I mean, what if there's, there's a thin veil in certain areas because of, of land elements or whatever, whatever the energy is, or, you know, what if there's another parallel universe or some other dimension that is kind of bleeding into ours in certain areas and maybe they can communicate with you. The, you know, the, the evidence that we've gathered there that Brad and John have, have seen and gathered, it's intelligent. And John is clearly teaching the house to speak back. So what is the house? Something intelligent. I, I don't know. But it's it's produced and it produce it continues to produce. Uh and and it's just fascinating to to see it for your own for your own eyes. Um so yeah, I, I mean it's hard for me to pinpoint exactly what I think is going on there because there's you know, the paranormal, it's hard to even pinpoint anything. You know, I, I can't put my stamp on that, but, uh, but my gut tells me that it's possibly multidimensional. It's possibly some kind of energy, uh, happening at the house. And maybe that's spiking up, you know, some of these, uh, some of these entities, you know, maybe there's a, there's a connection between the energy from a multidimensional portal opening up to, possibly fueling a uh, manifestation of entities. I don't know. You know, it's awesome to think about. And I think we need to get science involved closer to be able to look at this. And this is a great house to study, man. I mean, it's being studied 24 seven. It is, uh, it's just, you know, it's just really a really great controlled study. And John and Brad, they're lucky to have it. Alice turned the keys over to them after she left the house in 2011, and they've been studying it ever since. So, so they're they're probably some of the only people I know that that have a a, a you know a frequently uh, highly act, active house that they have cameras on and, and you know devices and everything uh, studying the house 24/7. Yeah, it's like having keys to like the science, the ongoing science project. I'm s super jealous. And the, you know, as, as far as the area being active, I mean, modern physics is definitely involved. But as far as the area being active, I mean, heck, you have Calvin Parker's appearance, you know, that a lot of mm -hmm. people forget is um, you guys hit on so many, so many things saying almost fire, all, all kinds of neat things with ball lightning, which I think is you know, definitely some electricity discharging in odd, possibly paranormal ways. But most of what we know, and this is mentioned in the film, most of what we know about modern physics can be explained by other dimensions is the potential for maybe even that extraterrestrial element there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Alice, Alice has had many, many uh, experiences, not just the one that made her move out with light. And, um, you know, we deep dive into the film, so definitely go see the film to see what Alice is talking about these lights. But there's, there's, there's a few things happening at the house that go along with some other people's experiences 
with UFOs. And that's why we talked to Calvin Parker, who is a UFO, uh, sorry, an alien abductee. Um, and such a great, his experience was sort of similar to Alice's. So, you know, we're trying to put the pieces together of what's going on in the house Mm -hmm. by talking to all these people, because, you know, it's, it starts to sway on the side of some kind of extraterrestrial, uh, some kind of intelligent uh, life forms. I, you know, it. This is complex. It's just, it, it's a complex story. It's a complex situation, and it it, it really needs uh, to be looked at by science because it, it, you know it, it, it's so it's. It's just so bizarre of what has happened to Alice and in her house. Um, and just looking at it from a science perspective will help maybe unravel the, you know, peel back the onion or some kind of discovery that would be made in, 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 in getting closer to, to what those lights are. And, and that is, you know, that is the, that was, that's the goal of the documentary is to see what is it that's going on at Alice's home? Yeah, there's a lot going on there. And there's, you know, the the modern physics element. And like you mentioned, we've been dancing around this elephant in the room in a spacesuit or this extraterrestrial aspect, possibly. And just when you're totally ready to engage with that particular aspect you guys have a psychic with no idea of anything, which I thought was genius. And I don't want to give away too much, but they just invited somebody with no idea of absolutely anything. And where it went from there, whoa. So to be completely uh, true with this, this is, you know, she found objects leaning up. Anyway, prior, I guess they call it precognitive intelligence could be at work in this area or in this home. Um, did you guys have any personal experiences with any precognitive intelligences like that psychic did when she arrived at the house? You know, uh, no, I didn't have anything happen to me before I went to the house and, you know, Steve, I don't believe he, he had anything happen to him before we stepped foot in the house. Um, yeah, Joe Morris, our psychic that we, um, that we had, uh, come to the house. Uh, we, I met her, uh, Vera and I, uh, my wife, Vera, we used to do a podcast a long time ago and, and Jill, we met Jill through our podcast and she was always somebody who stood out to me as credible. Um, she does a lot of, uh, police cases and unsolved, uh, criminal, um, cases, and, uh, and so, uh, when the, the time came to that, you know, Steve wasn't on board with a psychic. He's never been on board with psychics, but for this house, we wanted to kind of hit every angle and kind of, uh, you know, see, see what, see what a psychic would say. Cause you know, it, you never know, they might hit on something, but we, in the film, you know, we were kind of like, well, let's challenge it. You know, if somebody's going to pre uh pre you know pre research the house and you know we we send somebody in that has knowledge of it pre coming in then then they're going to give us everything that we've we've uh you know they they see online or you know that they've heard about the house so you know before the film we actually had uh those guys take a lot of their stuff down because we knew that we we're going to have people coming in and we didn't want anybody to pre-research anything about the house. We didn't. We wanted people coming in with, with zero knowledge of where they're going. And that was that was the case for our psychic, Jill. You know, I I called her and I was like, hey, you know, I I gotta ask. Do you mind um, flying to a place that you're not gonna know where you're going and coming and doing the shoot? <laughs> <laughs> and not knowing anything about it, and you know, she was so so great about. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely down. Thank God she trusted us. You know, we're like, you know, putting her on a plane to to some random city to to you know some random location that she has nothing to you know knowing nothing about. 
And uh, it was really neat to see uh, when she came in. I mean, we filmed for for hours with her, and uh, some of the stuff that she picked up on was just uh, was just amazing. And it really added to the documentary just to give that insight. You know, what does a psychic say? You know, we have we have the professionals on the um, scientific side, uh, and and what does you know what does somebody with uh, with extra you know, sensory, uh, somebody with a psychic ability, uh, somebody that can tap into possibly the other side, what do they say? So everything you saw in the film um, with what she picked up on, I mean, I 150% can promise you that was all real. We never gave her any kind of clues, any kind of information. I mean, you could see her face when she's like, I mean, we just kind of took her from the airport she landed, she got in a car, our producer Paul picked her up and, uh, and filmed her, and uh, she got to the house, I'm ready, you know, I, I'm waiting for her outside, she gets out of the car, walks in the house, she doesn't know whether to ring the doorbell or not, she meets Alice for the first time, I mean, that, you just don't do that in production, it's just so, you never know what's going to happen, and that's kind of how we took this, this doc, it was fly by the seat of your pants, and uh that was kind of challenging, you know, and, and, and it is really cool to see uh, how that turned out and how well that turned out. And it was really neat um, that it ties in with the rest of the story. And really, I mean, this, this house or this, this energy gave it to us because, I mean, the whole story just unfolded for us really well. Yeah, it's almost like the house is almost kind of telling the, it, it's 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 as and I'm glad that you said that uh, you know it was being taught to speak because it's kind of true. It's really telling a story, and the I mean, wow! Without going into detail about her arrival at the house, you guys have to see this this show. It's pretty amazing. And um, one thing she did say that I thought was interesting for a psychic is that a lot of dimensions were going on in the house. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And <laughs> um, I, a question I have to ask, you know, it's, it was mentioned somewhere in the in the documentary, which is so in-depth, and I think that was so well handled and so well managed, bringing somebody who had no idea of anything, by the way. But um, there were some questions being asked to that individual and a uh, or at a, a different part, and uh, there was a fire detector there were some questions being asked about a, of another fire and a fire, mm -hmm. a fire detector went off in the home first time ever. And it was mentioned that these entities, if they could burn the house down, they could, or they would, I'm sorry. If the, if they could burn the house down, they would with their, uh, it brings up um, some other individuals, a personal friend of mine and myself who had things destroyed by fire. Was this something that you had heard before, or was this the first time that you'd heard that kind of kind of a comment? Yeah, not to not to spoil the film too much, but um, but yeah, what what you what you're talking about there, that moment was a first for us. Uh, the stu the the events that happened in that moment have never happened before that, and never in until this day have not happened uh, again. Um, I mean. I check in with Brad, John, and Alice all the time, and they tell me, you know, what's happening in the house still. And that event still has not happened. So that was a one-off event at that time. And, um, you know, we, we took it serious. Uh, that is a serious, serious um, uh, piece of knowledge or, or, you know, advice that the, the psychic – Jill Morris had had um, given Alice, and uh, and we took it we took it serious. Alice actually bought you know extra extra cameras and extra um, you know some some fire fire uh, prevention uh, pieces for the for the home after that because you know that's that's kind of a, a big deal. You, you, somebody tells you they're they want to burn down your house. You, you kind of take that serious, whether it's a uh, a ghost or, or a human. You know, <laughs> anybody saying that that's that's something that that you really take serious. So, um, yeah, it's startling. Uh, it was very negative, um, and that 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 goes along with the multiple 
things and per personalities coming through there. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff in the house is, is very, very, uh, nice. And, 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 um, what do I want to say? Just, just very, very caring. You know, you get the, you get that, but every once in a while you'll get, you'll get something that, that, uh, that has a little negativity to it. And, and that's what, the medium, uh, sorry, the psychic was picking up on. So, so well, so well documented, so well made such an epic film and the footage, you guys, I want to talk about it, but I just can't, you have to see it. It's stuff that will blow your mind. And, um, I, I can't thank you enough for coming on the podcast. Kendall, where can people keep up with what you're doing? Keep up with the project, purchase the movie. I wouldn't rent it. I'd buy it. And, um, anything else you have going on? Yeah, so um, the movie is available on 26 different uh, video-on-demand platforms. So anywhere you can rent movies, you can rent this. You can even rent this in, uh, in, in uh, video stores. Believe it or not, there's some video stores still around. You can get that there. Uh, you can get nice. it on bestbuy.com. Uh, but the best place to get it, and yeah, you're right, you should buy it because, um, you know, I've watched it many, many times, and, you know, uh, we made the movie. Uh, it, it's something that you're going to want to watch uh, just over and over again to to actually see different angles of it. You know, I'll give you a little flip tip. We left some stuff in there, little cookies for you uh, of of what could be paranormal. We don't know, um, and and we left that in there for you. So so you might see that on a second watch or a third watch. So. Um, it's, it's a fun movie to watch, uh, and, and yeah, you can buy that, um, on iTunes. You can get it on, uh, let's see here. It's on iTunes. Um, it's on Google play. It's on, uh, it's, it's, uh, go to the house in between.com. Uh, that's the house in between.com. And we have all the links in, in, um, everywhere you can watch it. And if you're wanting to watch it overseas, uh, the best place to catch that is on Vimeo, uh, the Vimeo on demand spot there. Uh, but the house in between.com is the best place to, uh, to check it out and see where you can, where you can uh, watch it. And then also, yeah, sign up cause we will keep you involved. And if, you know, we do a part two or, you know, we got some t-shirts and some hats and stuff for sale in the store. And, uh, you know, it's a little community right now of a lot of people uh, chiming in on, on uh, our message board of what what's going on in the movie and stuff. So it's, it's fun. Uh, Facebook, you can, you can follow the house in between on Facebook, uh, Instagram. Um, yeah. So you can find us everywhere. We're out there. Um, the movie is, uh, is a fun watch. I think you, you guys will like it if you're into the paranormal or even if you're not into the paranormal, um, it's, it's a good movie to, to uh, watch with, even with your family. So you can, that's a movie you can watch with your, Watch your watch with your kids and in your your young ones and stuff. So um, yeah, and as far as future projects, uh, my wife Vera um, Welton and I are are working on some stuff uh, that that is going to be fun. And hopefully, you know, right right now we're we're all on lockdown. So um, you know, once once we're it's, it's safe to go out and start working again, we'll we'll start uh, working on these future projects here. So. Um, yeah, I'd love to give a shout out to Vera, my wife. She, she was my, uh, rock in, in helping make this film. She, uh, she's one of the producers on the film and she just, I mean, she did such a phenomenal job helping craft some of the, the segments in the, in the film. And, and she, she just, she was such a, such a major force in this. Uh, Steve, just awesome co-director with me. Um, Alice and, and and Brad and John, just awesome people to work with. Uh, just everybody that came into the house for this film, I love to give a shout out to. I, I it was just it's just such a unique experience. Um, you know, it was, it was amazing to work with all these different people and and just have the kind of love and and care that they they gave us when we came in. I mean, they they opened their hearts to us and their and in telling their story and that really made all the difference on camera. So, you know, and, and, uh, and, um, just, there's so many people to thank for this. Uh, Corey, uh, Frost, our amazing editor, 
um, Joe Miller, our sound designer. Uh, yeah, just just so many people to thank. And, and uh, yeah, go ahead and check out the film. Go to our website, thehouseinbetween.com. And the the website is so cool because, like you said, all the links are active and swiftly will take you to however you want to watch it. Anyway, I'm so glad you all did the project. It's amazing. And um, I have to agree with you, your wife. I think she did the illustrations, which were so cool. Um, yeah, you're right. She did. That's awesome. Yeah. Man, I, I can't wait to um, keep in touch with you and the project. And I can't thank you enough for coming on. Take care, Kendall, and uh, talk soon, I hope. Hey, thanks, Ryan. I really appreciate it. This was fun. Bye-bye. Awesome. Cool. We're off. Um, yeah, man, That I, I thank you so much for coming on. And uh, now that I have your contact info, we'll have to keep in touch and, and, and chat more about stuff. Hey, that sounds awesome, man. I love the, that you're into the, the multidimensional UFO uh, approach on, on paranormal. I appreciate that. And not enough people talking about that. <laughs> no, no, there's really not. There's really not. And we will. I'll do my best to get this out today, and I'll shoot you a link before I do. So, thanks. Hey, hey, awesome. That was a fun interview. I really appreciate it, man. You're a good interviewer. Thanks, my man. Have a great Fourth of July weekend. Yeah, you too. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Blast off, blast off, blast off, blast off. Come blast off in my time machine. Third eye feel.